Welcome back to the Talking Sports Podcast, hosted by Peter DiBiase and John Rocco Trumpor, right here on YouTube and Apple Podcasts. Guys, we appreciate you guys clicking on the audio form as well as the YouTube form of this episode. And the main reason you guys clicked on this episode, obviously, is because of the title and the thumbnail, is NFL Draft is coming this Thursday, first round Thursday, second and third round Friday, and then obviously rounds four through seven on Saturday. So this is an NFL mock draft or NFL draft preview, and we are joined by a special guest, Judge Mathis, of the Cover One Network, as well as hosts the, and produces the Air Raid Hour on Mondays and Thursdays. Judge, appreciate you coming on, man. Hey, man. I, uh, I, this is my time of year, so I always love uh, any chance I get to talk NFL draft. Yeah, and before, obviously, I just kind of introduced you. But, and where's, like, the best place if people want to follow you? And obviously, we'll put it in the description for everyone yeah. to do that. Uh, my personal Twitter is at Judge Mathis. My, uh, uh, my show Twitter is at The Bills Guys. You can find us on uh, YouTube Mondays and Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Our show is called The Air Raid Hour, and it's a, a Buffalo Bills-centric uh, live stream show. If you guys are a Bills fan, I would highly, highly recommend checking it out. If you're an NFL fan that just wants to get another perspective or just good content, I would definitely check it out. Guys, make sure you guys follow us on Twitter, Talking Sports PD, as well as Instagram. Both are Talking Sports PD. Both of those will be in the description, as always. As well as, like I said, YouTube and Apple Podcasts. YouTube is our main source of viewership and um, content for you guys. But if you guys also want to listen to the audio form and Apple Podcasts, that will be in the description. And obviously we're doing our NFL mock draft and how we have done this in the past for the NBA and NFL. Jar and I, who obviously isn't here, he's still studying abroad in Florence. So he'll be back in a couple of weeks. So don't nobody worry about that. But how we usually did it, it was with people, we would just go back and forth and each give our number one pick, number two pick. And then we found that getting repetitive. What we are doing tonight with Judge is that we are going to, st- we're going to do a whole first round mock draft, but we're going to alternate picks. So Judge is going to start with the first pick with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm going to the Detroit Lions, and obviously you guys get how it's going to go, and we'll give you our full NFL mock draft. And also make sure you guys comment down below who you want in your NFL team drafting, and we'll obviously respond. So, Judge, you're the guest. We're going to start you off. You're going to the number one pick in the draft. Hopefully the Bills don't have that anytime soon. But <laughs> the Jacksonville Jaguars have that this year. Once again, who are the Jaguars taking in the first round? I'll, I'll tell you what. This, is, this pick is crazy because usually by now we sort of have an inkling of who the first pick is in the the draft is going to be but in this case I'm going to take Aiden Hutchinson out of uh, Michigan I just take a look at all of the various different first round picks of the Jaguars over the years Trevor Lawrence obviously is the franchise quarterback but didn't have the greatest rookie season Travis Etienne CJ Henderson uh, Kalevon Chason uh, I mean they have drafted a lot of players Taven Bryan DJ Chark, who aren't even on the team anymore, Leonard Fournette. They need the sure thing. They need to take someone at number one overall. They know is going to come in and is going to contribute to this football team. Someone that's sort of a little bit bust proof, should I say. So they go with Aiden Hutchinson over Trayvon Walker. The only caveat to that is the GM of the the Jaguars is Trent Baalke. And Jim Harbaugh is the coach at Michigan. Those two guys know each other from their time in San Francisco, and apparently they hate each other's guts. So it would be a totally Jacksonville Jaguars thing to do to pass on Aiden Hutchinson because the GM and Jim Harbaugh at Michigan of Aiden Hutchinson uh, don't get along. But I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with Aiden Hutchinson here. Uh, I love the pick, and I feel like that's probably if you Google mock, mock drafts, that's probably the consensus at this point. Mm-hmm. Even though I agree with you that we usually know who the first pick is, or we don't know, but it's been leaked multiple times by people, agents, all that fun stuff. So we kind of have a good hunch. Obviously the Jaguars, like you said, could not go Hutchinson and just uh, shock people and maybe guy go like Trayvon Walker a little more, who has a little more bust potential. And that's who I'm going with, with the number two pick. I completely see the Detroit Lions doing this. I think this is a thing where I like Trayvon Walker. I'm not like over the top of him for Trayvon Walker, but I think judge, he's been rising up draft boards. Yeah, like crazy. I have a first round grade on him. I don't have a top two grade on him. That's hundred percent sure. But people love the combine and I think, and love their pro days. And I'm, I don't, I'm not in love with the combine. I think it's useful, but I also think it's completely overhyped. You got to see the production on the field. And at Georgia, it was tough to get production because their talent 
pool is insane, the limited reps, all that stuff, but he didn't produce at an extremely high level. This is a pick where if the Lions do that, and I have him taken Trayvon Walker from Georgia, they're they're expecting his ceiling. They think his ceiling is higher than Hutchinson. He might have a higher ceiling than Hutchinson. I think that's a complete, completely fair assessment. The problem is he has bigger bust proof. And you do really want to take a bust at two. That's a huge investment. I, I think the Lions trust Dan Campbell. Defensive mind is an absolute mm-hmm. lunatic, but he's a defensive <laughs> mind. Trayvon Walker, he's my number two pick. I think I think the Lions go with that pick, and I think they, they bet on the upside over potentially take, taking an offensive lineman or Kayvon Thibodeau. Yeah, you know, looking at him, too, a lot of the things that people say about that Georgia defensive line, and they see it, say it with respect to Jordan Davis and Devontae Wyatt and some of those other guys, is they say, like, Kirby creates that defense – you're, it doesn't accentuate the pass rush there at Georgia. It's about stopping the run, sort of like the Buffalo Bills. It's about doing your 111th. They're not known for their pass rush there. So a lot of people think with those combine numbers that Trayvon Walker put up, it was actually Georgia's defense, despite all the talent and how successful they were, that was holding him back from being a high ceiling pass rusher. So projection over production there, definitely for, for Trayvon Walker. All right, am I up at pick number three here? You're up at you're the, you're the Houston Texans GM, which is not a fun job, but that's what you're doing right now. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I I think this is where you're going to see the first trade of the night. I'm not going to predict a trade because we're not doing that, but I think that Kayvon Thibodeau is someone that the New York Jets have their eye on at four, and I think the New York Giants have their eye on at five, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Giants jump the Jets and move up two spots and trade a second or a third rounder. Uh, and move up here to take Kayvon Thibodeau. So I just want to get that in there in case it does happen. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm going to I'm gonna stick. Obviously, I'm sticking here with the pick. I am going to go with Derek Stingley Jr. out of LSU. I think that most of the reports coming out are that his medicals have cleared. The consensus now seems to be that the last two seasons where he hasn't really looked the same as he did his freshman year were due to an injury that he never really – fully gave himself a chance to recover from. And you just see it in those clips of him and Jamar Chase at practice. I think Derek Stingley Jr. is the Jamar Chase of this draft. I think he's going to step in right away, be a plug and play cornerback number one, and he's going to give you elite level cornerback play if indeed he is healthy, which most people think he is. So I think he's going to go higher than most people think here. A lot of people slipped him because of injuries. But I'm going to go with Derek Stingley Jr. here at pick number three. That's, I wouldn't say that shocked me. I think, obviously, the needs for the Texans, uh, I have interior, I have not interior, line, O-line and corner is my two needs for the Texans. Derek Stingley, it's been a kind of a flip-flop of Stingley and Sauce, who's one, who's two. I have Sauce as one. Obviously, it doesn't really matter mm-hmm. what I think. But I think the Stingley at three, that's a, that's a total – if they go to pass up on maybe an edge or even an offensive lineman, that's – Probably the guy, Stingley, huge upside. His freshman year was was something special. Mm-hmm. So I like that pick. And now this kind of makes me a little easier pick for me with the Texans at four. Uh, not the Texans at four, excuse me, the Jets at four. Look, they could go Sauce Garner. They could really, really want to reach for a receiver. That would be kind of stupid. They could always reach for a safety in Kyle Hamilton. I think the safe pick would be Kayvon Thibodeau, and that's what I'm doing at four. Look, the Jets need edge rush help. They need to get after the quarterback. Um, and they haven't done that in the most recent years. And maybe start of the year in college football in September, Kevin Thibodeau was the number one consensus pick in the draft. He mm-hmm. slides down a couple spots to four. He goes to a team that needs an edge. And I think Thibodeau, he's a little more polished than Trayvon Walker. But there's also been these reports, and I don't always buy into this, that he doesn't love football. He likes football, but doesn't love football. Those are always a little weird kind of things you want to buy into you like i heard on the radio this past week that people this this i forgot who it was said that he doesn't love football uh, you can take that whatever you want he might love football and i think he does and i think he potentially could be the best edge rusher he is the bit in my opinion the biggest upside in this draft at any position he screams a future uh, all pro the end and i think that's too much for the jets to pass up at four so i have cave on thibodeau going number four to the new york jets yeah, no, I, I, I love that pick for them. I think that 
I think a lot of that off-field stuff is a little overhyped, and I think it's GMs trying to get him to slide a little bit down draft boards. Is he, like, maybe the complete player and the consensus number one that he was made out to be last season? Probably not, but he's still a really dangerous pass rusher with a really high ceiling, and those don't come around often, and those are the ones that go early on in the draft. So uh, I totally agree with your pick there. That's why I think the Giants would jump the Jets uh, and try to make that trade with Houston because Houston could likely get Derek Stingley at pick number five and pick up an extra pick. Uh, so now I am up with the New York G- uh, Giants yes. uh, here with pick number five. And I am going to go with a little bit of a shocker here again, uh, just because I think he might be the third ranked on people's boards as opposed to the first ranked on people's boards. But I'm going to go with Charles Cross, the offensive tackle from Mississippi State. I think that they can then slide Andrew Thomas over to right tackle and Brian Dable can get a little bit of solidity, uh, solidify that offensive line a little bit. Uh, Obviously he's got John Policiano there at center now, somebody he's comfortable with. So the giants go out and they solidify their offensive line. Hope give blindside protection to Daniel Jones and uh, try to get that offense back on track there in New York. So I'm going to go with Charles Cross the offensive tackle from Mississippi state. I think that is, I think the offensive tackle is where the giants are going to go. Odds are maybe less Thibodeau falls there mm-hmm. or depending who falls there. I think tackle is probably this position. It's been a, it's been a crap shoot where who it is cross Neil on um, Kongwu. I think I said his name, right? I probably got this. I probably butchered his name, but it's whatever. I like the pick for the giants at five tackles, probably the pick and Charles cross is, um, I like Charles Cross. I'm going sit. I'm the GM of the Panthers right now. And what the Panthers are going to do is not what I would do, but we're going to do it. We're taking a quarterback. We're going, we're going crazy. We're going crazy at number six. I know they got linemen. I know they got corner needs, but you know, judge, you know, the pressure to get a quarterback in this league is incredible. If you get the quarterback, you can, you can kind of make shift to other people, other positions. You can work around it. Malik Willis at number six to the Carolina Panthers. Do I love the pick? No. Do I like the pick? Not really. But I think this is what the Panthers are going to do. And I think I have a couple first-round quarterbacks. It's really just Kenny Pickett and Malik Willis. I don't buy into the Desmond Ritter hype. I don't buy into the Sam Howe hype. I don't see the upside there to take them in the first round. Malik Willis at six. And I think the Panthers panic here. I think they think, you know what? If we don't go – what's the word? If we don't, if we don't take the quarterback at six – we're not going to get our guy. And I don't think we can trade back because they're afraid Pittsburgh moves up. The saints move up somebody in that realm, or even the Falcons grab them. Seattle could grab them at eight or nine. That's the option. But I think the Panthers take the number one quarterback on the board and my board, Malik Willis, they shock people. We wake up Friday morning and uh, ESPN and Fox sports one or whatever you want to talk about are completely ripping the Carolina Panthers, but they're taking Malik Willis at number six. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if, if you're going to take a if you're going to take a quarterback in the first round of this draft, that's the quarterback you take. He's got the arm, you know, he can sort of throw, um, you know, off placement, things of that nature. He obviously has the legs to fall back on. I think if there is a quarterback that you take in the first round of the draft, that is the quarterback. Um, most of the most of the, the quarterback I see mostly linked to the Panthers, which would be a huge mistake, is uh, Kenny Pickett. It's like, why are you drafting Sam Darnold to replace Sam Darnold? Like, so that doesn't make sense. So I'm glad you didn't go there because, I mean, you just have to be stupid if you're the Carolina Panthers. You're throwing this number six overall pick out the window just so you can go 500 or not embarrass yourself if, if uh, you're the Carolina Panthers, which is just an absolute waste. Um, I, I, the, the trade that I've heard floating around, that if I were the Carolina Panthers, I would do this in a heartbeat. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo and Debo Samuel, right? Debo Samuel, South Carolina guy. Jimmy Garoppolo, Debo Samuel for like Robbie Anderson, pick six and pick number six. And like maybe they throw in like Yeter Gross Matos, the defensive end or yeah. another pick. If I were the Carolina Panthers and the 49ers felt like they had to, to deal Debo, man, I would make that move in a heartbeat. Give yourself Jimmy G, give yourself Debo. So you you, you put yourself on that sort of 500 level uh, again or, or greater than 500 level again and and you're not feeling the pressure maybe as much from the fan base. So I also think, the, the trigger I would pull. If, I also if think it really saves don't. it could save Matt Rule's job because mm-hmm. he's in a point where he's done after this year if they stink. And I think he's done anyway. I think he should have been done this past season. Oh yeah. But 
Matt Rule might think, you know what? I get Jimmy G. I can go ten and seven, wild uh, wild card spot, right? And mm-hmm. how they how I mean, how are they gonna justify firing me? I made the playoffs. Not everybody. Made, I made the playoffs. I, I'm in a playoff game, and I think that's that's always tough to fire a coach that makes the playoffs. That's that, mm-hmm. that's a really it's a tough sell just to everybody. Matt Rule sees that, or he could also do the Malik Willis thing and say, you know what? I got my quarterback, but you got to give me time to develop him, and you can feed the Panthers GM that crap which is crap <laughs> because, you know, you know, you hear that all the time when a guy drafts a quarterback, he's just like, you know what? We got to give me a couple of years. No, you really don't. If you stink, you stink. It doesn't really matter. Judge seven. You're, you're the New York Giants GM tonight. That's basically your title at this point. <laughs> Giants, you went Charles Cross. You went tackle. What are they doing at seven? I'm about to go batshit off the wall crazy. And this will be the, if this does happen, this will be one of the talks of draft night. I'm going to take another offensive lineman here. I'm going to take Iki Aquanu off the board from North Carolina State. They're going to plug and play him at left guard. You'll have Charles Cross at left tackle. You'll have Iki Aquanu at left guard. You'll have Andrew Thomas at right tackle. And the New York Giants, all of a sudden, maybe a little bit of like Cleveland Browns-like, they're going to try to build up that offensive line, build a juggernaut of an offensive line, get Saquon back uh, to his old form, and really do everything you can to sort of pad that quarterback in Daniel Jones. I think you're going to try to see the Giants trade back in reality on draft day, especially um, I think if the board falls like this, I don't think they want to take a corner and, you know, some of the other positions, I don't know if they want to take a guy like Jermaine Johnson this early, uh, even though I think he he's caliber of that, that, that caliber of player. So I think in reality, they look to trade back after trading up the first time in what I thought would be their, uh, the scenario, but there's no trades in this mock. So I'm going to stick with Iki Aquano. I'm going to take Iki Aquano off the board here to the New York Giants who are restructuring and reshuffling that offensive line to protect their quarterback. This is the team that last year, uh, what was it? Second and long from the goal line and they quarterback snuck it because yeah. they were too afraid yeah. of what their yeah. offensive line could I do. Love, so I, love I'm in, the here. I live in I'm an hour outside of New York city. So I get all the <laughs> giants and jets radio and all that fun stuff. That was, um, it was fun listening because I, I'm not a Giants hater because I'm a Bills fan. I don't think, just because I'm in New York, don't like the Jets, but I respect yeah. the Giants, Super Bowls and all that fun stuff. Um, but that was that was a low point. And you know, the Giants ownership holds them, holds themselves to a very high esteem. And they don't they believe that they're they're the Cowboys, the Steelers, all that fun yeah. stuff. But no, that was a bad play. That was that that was Joe Judge got fired that play. <laughs> that was Joe Judge's firing. And you know what? You go. You go the NC State tackle, and I cannot pronounce his name, Iquai Iquanu. We'll go with that. And then Charles Cross. And you got two guys to protect your maybe Daniel Jones or whoever you take in the future. I Eight, I'm the Atlanta Falcons GM. They're a mess. You got Marcus Mariota, at quarterback. You have a all basically almost an all-pro tight end in Kyle Pitts, but you got nobody else. You have no one else. You have Sauce Garner on the board. You could do that. You don't, you don't want to really take a linebacker. I'm going wide receiver. I think you have to go wide receiver at eight if you're the Falcons. Mm-hmm. The problem is there's so many good wide receivers. There's the Garrett Wilsons of the world, the Chris Olaves, the Drake Waddens. I know you're not a high on Traylon Burks. I follow you on Twitter. So I know that. Jameson Williams, he would probably be the number one wide receiver off the board if it wasn't for his ACL. I think the Falcons take Jameson Williams. I really do. I think he's the number one receiver in this class. And I think the ACL injury is kind of – taking a step in the right direction, the sense of recovery, all of the reports that are coming out that he's way past his recovery time. Look, are the Falcons trying to win a Super Bowl this year? Obviously they're going to push that because that's what every team wants to do. That's just not the, the nature of what the land of Falcons are. They have no receivers. That team is depleted in their second, excuse me, in the secondary, in their, in their wide out position. You have to get a weapon. You can debate judge. You could debate me. Anybody could debate me who, what receiver you take at eight. I think it's Drake London. I think it's Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, or James Williams. I think those are the four guys you would take at eight. I'm going James Williams, the biggest upside, and my number one receiver on my board. So I got the Atlanta Falcons getting a weapon for Marcus Mariota or the future quarterback of the Atlanta Falcons, uh, whoever that is. And I got Jameson Williams at number eight. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the the Falcons depth chart, I'm looking at their wide receivers. It's um... not good. Olamide, uh, Z- Z- Zacchaeus, Damier Bird, and Kaderil Hodge. Like the, they signed Auden Tate as well, and they got Frank Darby. So the, um, it, it's an empty basket there. And I think that 
Um, a lot of people have Drake London going in that spot, which I don't disagree with either. I could easily see them going as maybe the healthier guy in a Drake London. Uh, but Jamison Williams, man, I'm totally on board. He's my wide receiver one. And the reason why he is my wide receiver one is because it's not just his speed. If it was just, if he was just a one trick pony and he was a fast guy, I wouldn't have him number one on my board. There are plenty. There's a reason why Tyquan Thornton is a fourth or a fifth round pick and not a top 10 pick, but it's the way he's able to control his speed, the acceleration, the deacceleration, the stop and start. It's absolutely incredible. So uh, yeah, when he's healthy, he's going to be a weapon for, uh, for that team. So that puts me on the clock here. And I think this is the easiest pick of the night. The Seattle Seahawks run up to the podium and take a corner that I think fits their system perfectly. They go with Sauce Gardner, take him off the board uh, here to the Seattle Seahawks. I just think he fits. I don't yeah. think much explanation is needed there. Uh, uh, very good corner. I think I think I'm I'm the Jets GM now, and I think they're screaming, <laughs> blowing stuff. They took and I agree, Sauce Gardner to the nine, Seattle. Seattle could be really stupid and take Kenny Pickett. Um, they could also take Evan Neal at nine. That's not a horrible pick. Um, the Jets at 10 are interesting, right? If this is how the draft board falls, and we know me and Judge are going to be 100% right because this is how that works. Um, the Jets could go a couple options. They could take Evan Neal, the tackle from Alabama. They could reach for Andrew Booth Jr. if they really wanted a, a corner. They're, they, could, they already took their edge. They're going their wide receiver. And this is where Drake London is going to go. Drake London, my number two receiver on my board. I think the Jets probably think, have him as number one. And the Jets have been linked to Drake London, I feel like, for a while. I think that is their guy at 10. I think he gets them at 10. When was the last time the Jets have had a big go up and get it that also a speed wide receiver? And they don't have that on the roster. They have Corey Davis, Elijah Moore, Braxton Berrios. They all kind of do the same thing. Obviously, Corey Davis is outside, but he's not a – a true number one, and obviously Barrios and more or more slot and inside wide receivers. They've been linked to the DK Metcalf, and we know they want to get a re receiver. They've been linked to Debo Samuel. They tried to get Tyreek Hill. He gave him the middle finger and left. Um, obviously, they went linked to DK Metcalf. They're going to go receiver, and if they've been linked to DK Metcalf, Drake London fits that. I think he's similar to DK Metcalf. I like Drake London at 10 to the Jets, and I like the, I like the Jets taking a receiver at 10 unless Stingley or Garner are there at 10. So I got the Jets going, Drake London. Yeah, uh, and that leaves me up here with the Washington Commanders. And I'll tell you what, this one's tough. You look at their depth chart. They're pretty stacked at running back. They got a decent wide receiver room, even though Terry McLaurin looks like he's getting a little uh, antsy in terms of his contract. The depth at that wide receiver group isn't great. Uh, but I just look at the rest. Offensive line is solid. They obviously need some depth there. They lost a lot of depth. Uh, this offseason through free agency. Their defensive line is good, but again, really thin, so they could re-add to that defensive line as well. Linebacker, they just used to pick last year. Um, it's difficult to project where the Washington Commanders are going to go. I'm going to say with Terry McLaurin um, voicing some concerns about his contract, Curtis Samuel seemingly not being able to stay healthy. I know they just took a pick last year, used Deami Brown. I think the Washington Commanders – Go wide receiver here and take Garrett Wilson from Ohio State off the board here. I think they're going to try to give Carson Wentz every single weapon they can to try to justify uh, that awful trade that they that they made uh, for him. So I'm going to take Garrett Wilson from Ohio State here. Love the pick. Love the pick. I think Washington needs, obviously, weapons and the Terry McLaurin because mm -hmm. now every single receiver wants to get a big contract extension. And as soon as these guys get drafted two days later, they're going to request a – trade and get a contract extension obviously i'm joking but no i like gary wilson this receiver class is deep that's a, a great pick i'm at the 12 with the minnesota vikings they're very very interesting our corn nfl.com and most people their biggest needs corner mm -hmm. sauce gardner and Derek stingley are the top two consensus at corners those guys are both at the board um sauce went third to the houston texans and garner went nine to the seattle seahawks do they want to go andrew boop jr as a Bills fan, I hope they don't because I like Andrew Booth Jr. a lot. I don't think he gets to 25. Um, I think they pass on a corner. I don't think they take a corner. I think because of Evan Neal falling to 12, I think that's too hard to pass up. That's their second biggest need, in my opinion. And offensive linemen, Charles Cross and Ikwe Nkunu, 
Both the top two tackles went off the board at five and seven to both to the Giants. The Vikings don't pass on Evan Neal. They could reach for or stretch a little for Andrew Booth Jr. But I got the Minnesota Vikings guys going number 12 to, uh, excuse me, Evan Neal going number 12 to the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, like that. Obviously, they just took Christian Darisaw last year, but obviously what they can easily do is, is flip one of those guys over to right tackle. Exactly. And kick Brian O'Neill, their right tackle inside to guard, and that really solidifies that offensive line. So it's just really hard to pass up on that value there for Evan Neal, uh, which is something that the Houston Texans would have had to do. They would have had to sit there and have a conversation about that, uh, uh, have a conversation about that value there. This is tough. This next one is tough. Yeah. Houston Texans are on the board here. Their roster is just awful. Like it's, it is. It's the best player available draft for the Texans. Literally the best player available, but I feel like that front office is going to have like a really sort of high set of standards for the type of player that it looks for. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't yet know who I'm going to take here. So I'm going to go look, take a look at their pre-draft visitors to see if I can get some idea of some of the guys that they've been visiting with. Looking that list over real quick. Could they go? Um, could they go? They wouldn't go receiver. They could. They really could. Do they go? Do they go like a Jordan Davis, uh, Jermaine Johnson? Those are not um, bad options because they passed I'm, up. They took a corner. They did, they passed up on an edge. I'm taking, and this is a theme for me in this draft. Uh, doubling up on position groups. It's not really a double double up. They took Derek Stingley at pick three. They're gonna go safety Kyle Hamilton. At, uh, pit, at pick number 13 here. So they're going to get a corner and a safety to sort of rebuild that secondary there in Houston. Uh, I think that uh, a Notre Dame boy is somebody that the likes of Jack Easterby and Nick Casario will like. They did a private workout with him. Uh, I think he's the kind of character guy that they're looking for there to rebuild the program in Houston. So I'm going to go, I'm going to take Kyle Hamilton off the board here at pick 13. I think Texans, I think, Best player available at that point. And I think Kyle Hampton is probably the best player available. He falls to 13. Um, that's why you love the draft because crazy crap. Happens. <laughs> 14, I got the Baltimore Ravens taking Jermaine Johnson. I think he's the best edge player on the board. They have a need at linebacker. Nicobe Dean, Devin Lloyd <clears throat> could both be options at pick 14. And eh, maybe a little reaching. I People love Jermaine Johnson. He's kind of shut up the board. Not as far as. Trayvon Walker's shot up the board, but he shot up the board much farther than I think most people would have thought. And I think taking him at 14 gives him a true, another edge presence. We know the Ravens love defense. And this also might be a great pick for Jermaine Johnson going to the Ravens in their defense. They tried to sign Zadaria Smith and yeah. he sort of rebuffed their offer, went to Minnesota. I, I envision and I think the best case scenario for Jermaine Johnson is to get into a 43 system, like a wide nine, like something that like a, a Jim Schwartz runs, but he worked out at the combine as a three, four outside linebacker. Like he yeah. worked out with linebackers. So I think a lot of people in the NFL project him as a linebacker. So you now have him and you have FA away. I think that that is a, a really good combo of pass rushers there for that Baltimore Ravens defense. So I think you are, I think you're spot on there with that pick. <laughs> uh, is on the board um all right philadelphia eagles are on the clock with one of their two instead of now three picks yeah. i look at their wide receiver room uh, jalen rager is a bust i don't think you can get can think of anything uh i'm not gonna i don't, I don't he's a bust for them you have a guy like jalen hurts you, he needs more than Devonte smith smith whatever jalen rager progresses into quez watkins and zach pascal so i'm going to add a wide receiver to that room and I'm going to go Chris Alave from Ohio State, inside, outside flex. One of the best route runners in the draft. I think he adds some elements to that passing game and helps the Philadelphia Eagles figure out whether Jalen Hurts is the guy or not and is a guy who can work with Devontae Smith into the future to maybe give a future quarterback um, a good dynamic duo there. So the Eagles want to see what they got in Jalen Hurts, and they go with Chris Alave there from Ohio State with pick 15. You took what I wanted for the Saints to go <laughs> 16 because I think they need to go a receiver. Mm -hmm. But do they really want to take Traylon Burks or Jahan Dotson at this point? Those are my two next guys on my board. I love Jahan Dotson. I'm going to pass on that. I'm going to – you know what? I'm, I'm between two positions. I'm between a corner and a tackle. Um, and my tackle would be Trevor Penning, and then my corner would be Andrew Booth Jr. They do have another pick at 19. 
I don't think they go safety because Kyle Hampton's off the board. I'm looking at their top four needs. And you know what? Let's go interesting. We'll go Trevor Penning. We'll go tackle Northern Iowa. He's a, he's Spencer Brown 2.0. Um, he's one of those, he's Northern Iowa, right? Did I get us? I got a school, right? Yep. Okay. You never know. Um, Trevor Penning, I think they need offensive line help. The Saints, that's their number one need, in my opinion. They just lost Armstead, didn't they? Taron Armstead? To the Miami Dolphins. That, that's who I was thinking of. I, so you go on a live podcast and you just forget people. That's, that's what happens. Um, yes, Armstead, obviously, they, that's a big need, and that's their number one need. They could go wide receiver. I Judge just took Chris Olave right off the board, so that kind of screwed that pick up. They have another pick at 19, but at 16, I go Trevor Penning. They try to shore up that offensive lineman and protect, protect uh, Jameis Winston. So 16, Saints go Trevor Penning. All right, I am up now, and I just want to double check the Chargers. Uh, the Chargers. I just want to double check their depth chart before I pull the trigger, just to make sure they didn't do anything in free <laughs> that would, because I mean they've just been absolutely buck wild in free agency. I want to make sure they didn't do anything that sort of throws a wrench into my pick here, and yeah, they kind of did. Sebastian Joseph Day, Austin Johnson. Uh, mm. This makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, listen, they got Joey Bosa. They've got Khalil Mack. They've got a guy, I believe, in Kenneth Murray Jr., who struggled a little bit, but they want him being a former first-round pick to prosper. So I believe here that you could easily go wide receiver for the Los Angeles Chargers, but there's some depth at receiver in this class. I think the Chargers take Jordan Davis off the board. He is a guy who's going to eat up space for Khalil Mack, for Bosa, for uh, Kenneth Murray. So I'm going to go, I'm going to take Jordan Davis off the board here. Jordan Davis, he he's a guy I would not be mad if the Bills took at 25. It would be a hard pass. Jordan Davis, you guys know him from college football. Just the Georgia, he's just an absolute animal. He was a freak at the combine. Why not Chargers just strengthen that defensive lineman? 18th, or defensive lineman, excuse me, 18 Philadelphia Eagles. Judge had them taking Chris Olave at 15, so they kind of took away their wide receiver need. They got one more need that I think is probably strengthens them. They could go corner. I think they pass on that. I think they go linebacker. I think they go Devin Lloyd from Utah. I see this a lot in mock drafts. He's my number one. I believe he's my number one consensus. You always got to go. Always got to check the big board quickly. Um, yeah, Devin Lloyd's my number one consensus. Um, linebacker. So I'm taking Devin Lloyd at. 18. I think if the Eagles walked away with a first round of Chris Olave and Devin Lloyd, that's an that's an A draft right there. Or a first round. That's a it's a pretty good, pretty good draft haul right there in the first round. I think they need uh, that true linebackers. They don't have any legit linebackers on that roster. Devin Lloyd's gonna be a plug and play immediately on that team and be asked to do a lot. Devin Lloyd from Utah, my number one linebacker on the board. I think the Eagles feel a huge need and take him at 18. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that's a that's a really good pick here. I think that uh, I I had I had him pigeonholed for my Patriots pick. So that throws me <laughs> up a little bit. Uh, I was gonna go with him uh, at 23 New England. He's one of my favorite players in this draft. I mean, he is a guy who, I mean, first of all, you look at his archetype, his physical prototype, he looks exactly like Fred Warner, who's a really good, successful linebacker for the San Francisco 49ers. Now I'm not saying he is Fred Warner but he had, he fits that physical archetype on top of that. He can do some things and he can bend in some ways when asked to pass rush. That sort of reminds you of Micah Parsons a little bit. So again, I'm not saying he's Micah Parsons, but he <laughs> does some things that Micah Parsons capable of doing. So when you blend all that together, you just have a really good football player. Howie Roseman has been allergic to taking linebackers in years past. Um, so it's uh, it'll be interesting. Uh, but I think he's a good fit there. And I'm up now with the Saints, and I'm struggling because you're right. Receiver is the biggest need, but do you really want to take Jah- Jahan Dotson, Traylon Burks? Um, they have Michael Thomas. They have Marquez Callaway. They have Traquan Smith. Um, they have, you know, Deontay Harris. I look. They need a quarterback, but they got Jameis. It's a tough pick. The tough line pick. is not is settled. Defensive line is settled ish. I can see the thing is, it's like, I want to, I want to pick Devonte Wyatt here. Yeah. Because they got shy Tuttle. They got David Onimata, but they're, they're kind of shallow at defensive. 
They traded a first round pick next year to move up this year. Why? <laughs> like, was it was it because they want a quarterback? Was it because they feel like two first round picks this year will keep them afloat in the yeah. NFC South yeah. again? Like, it's the float. It's what? The float. What are so? If it's to, I'm tempted to take Jelani Woods, the tight end from Virginia here. Really? Uh, because their only tight end is Adam Troutman and Taysom Hill. And Juwan Johnson and Nick Vanette. I'm tempted to take Jelani Woods here. That would be the shock of the draft. I think this draft is pretty darn wild. But I'm going to control myself, and I'm going to go with Devontae Wyatt. Devontae Wyatt, okay. That seems like the best player available kind of picking, or one of the best player available at a position of need. Jelani Woods would be – there's always a couple picks in the first round. You're just like – you look back, or you at the draft night. And usually the Seahawks do yeah. it. You're like, what the yeah. hell? Yeah. Ian Rappaport came out today and he asked I, you retweeted and I, it. You I, quote tweeted it. I quote tweeted it. And the tweet was, I mean, it was essentially, there's a lot of guys who people think are third rounders that are going to be first rounders this year. It landed in Vegas for the draft. Uh, here are my thoughts. Number two on his list of bullet points. Players will go in round one that teams have as third rounders and vice versa. So that tells me guys like maybe Andrew Boot Jr. because of injury slip. Kari Elam might slip. Oh, Those please slip to 25. Please that I could slip. Um, and then, um, <laughs> you know, I listed the players I think could be shocking first-round picks. Jelani Woods was on that list. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think Jelani Woods, <laughs> or maybe even Calvin Austin there, could slide in there and be a, a shocking first-round pick. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do there. But, yeah, I'm going with uh, – I'm, I'm just going to stick with Devontae Wyatt. I like it. I like it. Pittsburgh Steelers at 20. This is very interesting. Do they want to go Kenny Pickett? I think they're a smarter franchise to take Kenny Pickett at 20. I think they're a smart enough franchise not to take Kenny Pickett at 20. Excuse me. Um, and then they want to ride out Mitch Trubisky for a year. And then next year's quarterback class is a little, little deeper. Obviously, you have um, – what's the quarterback from Alabama's name? Uh, Bryce Young. My God. Bryce Young and uh, CJ Stroud. From Ohio State, those are the two consensus. And I think those guys would both be graded higher than any quarterbacks in this year's class, in my opinion. Um, Steelers at 20. Let's go a defensive player. Let's go cornerback, who you just mentioned, who could potentially fall because of injury. Um, I Andrew Booth Jr. at 20. The Steelers love their secondary help. And I think they really don't have a true number one corner on the roster. They really don't. And I think Andrew Booth Jr. would slide in right away to this team and be an immediate impact. He's, he's a guy that, like you said, judge, he has three, but he produced and played as a freshman at, at Clemson. And I think the potential for Andrew Booth jr. He's my number three corner on the board. And I hope he falls to 25. I really do. And I know Bill's fans, and obviously the bills uh, content creator, everybody has their different opinion for what the bill is to do at 25 and everybody's not going to be satisfied. I would be satisfied at 25 with Andrew Booth Jr. But I think the Steelers are a smarter franchise. I don't think they love any of the offensive linemen on the board here. I think if Jordan Davis or Devontae Wyatt were here at 20, Judge, I think they could totally do that. But I got the Steelers taking the best available corner, and that is uh, Andrew Booth Jr. out of Clemson at 20. Yeah, that would have been my la- that would have been my next prediction. I probably would have gone Kenny Pickett there, but it'll be interesting to see how the Steelers really feel about the quarterbacks in this class. Uh, and I think that'll be <laughs> obviously be really telling when they get on the clock. And yeah. They have everybody but Malik Willis. I think I saw a report today that the only quarterback that they like in this draft is Kenny Pickett, and everyone else is just mad to them. But that could obviously be a bunch of BS. We never know. Yeah, half these reports are true. Half these reports are not true. So, um, all right, I am going to uh, again go a little off the board here with my next pick. Devin Lloyd is off the board. He was who I thought was going to go here. I think that the New England Patriots. One of the things that they're missing on defense is a I think they're missing I think they're missing a couple of things I'm actually going to change my mind I was going to take Chad Muma but I'm not I was going to take Chad Muma but I'm not looking at their roster I think that they have to replace the cornerback spot so I am going to call an audible on an audible take Chad Muma I am going to go and I am going to take Trent McDuffie off the board uh, from the University of Washington. He seems like a New England Patriots type of DB. I know he's got those shorter arms, but just such a technically sound player. 
just such clean tape from the University of Washington. So I think the Patriots go and they replace J.C. Jackson with Trent McDuffie at pick number 21. But I was looking at Muma and I was looking at Quay Walker as well. But I think that there will be some linebackers in the second round that they can get their hands on. So I'm going to go with that corner. All right, he passed up on the Kobe Dean. So that might have been my Yeah, I don't like the Kobe Dean for them. I think that they uh-huh. like those bigger linebackers. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. like Dante Hightower. They run that 34. I think they want a little bit more size there. Uh, I don't think you're going to see a guy like Nicobe Dean go to a team like the, the, the Patriots, but I also could be dead wrong. <laughs> I'm in the Packers GM right now. They're picking at number 22. And I feel like if they don't take a receiver in the first round, Aaron Rodgers is going to drop kick the whole front office. I just think that's what's happening. They miss, and I think, Rodgers would be a little annoyed that they missed out on a lot of a Wilson, London, and Williams. Next best available, Jahan Dotson. I love Jahan Dotson. I know I've commented on a couple of your tweets. I just like Jahan Dotson. I think he's a guy that can play inside and out. He has, in my opinion, the best hands in the draft. I would just go on YouTube and Google Jahan Dotson, and you guys will um, be a fun 10, 15 minutes because his hands are unreal. Good speed. I think Jahan Dotson's the prototypical solid NFL wide receiver. The Packers need need wide receiver help. They could go trailing Burks, in my opinion, but they could reach on a couple other guys. Uh, for instance, Christian Watson, Sky Moore, uh, George Pickens, Calvin Austin, just to name a handful. I like Jahan Dotson at 22. The Packers finally take a receiver in the first round and get a little, get Aaron Rodgers some help after losing Devonta Adams. So Jahan Dotson from Penn State's my pick for the Packers at 22. Nice. So I'm up here now. Arizona Cardinals, It's tough. This is right in my backyard here in Tempe. I think that they would like a, um, I think that they would like a wide receiver here. I think that's, uh, I think they would like a one tech, but I think even though I don't have much respect for Steve Kahn, I think he's a little uh, smart enough to know Mm -hmm. that uh, he can get a one tech later on in the draft. Obviously they need some pass rush help. I'm going to go look at some of these edge rushers that are still on the board and see see who they visited not seeing anyone on their visit list that really pops out to me as an edge rusher man um i see a name that they had a private workout with that's still on the board i'm gonna go with it uh here i should know better with the arizona cardinals and i just don't they're such a weird team to predict uh but i'm gonna take edge rusher george karloftis off the board here uh for the Arizona Cardinals. I look at a guy like George Karloftis. They've got J.J. Watt there, who obviously is a little long in the tooth. They've got Zach Allen there, but a guy like George Karloftis, even though he's not going to maybe stand up and rush the passer, like maybe someone you'd expect from the Arizona Cardinals, it's a guy who's got really good play strength, really good first step explosion. He's really good at setting the edge. Um, He's just an athletic, powerful edge prospect. I think most teams would expect a 43 team to fall in love with him, but I think a 34 team here is, uh, is going to go here with uh, the Arizona Cardinals. I'm going to take George Karloff just off the board. You stole my pick for the Dallas Cowboys at 24. (laughs) So I'm going to flip positions here. I think if David Ojobu didn't uh, pop his Achilles, which was super unfortunate that you never want to obviously root for that or ever see that. I think the Cowboys are going to go and they like, they like their offensive alignment and they like to, have legit offensive linemen. We haven't taken any interior O linemen in this draft so far. They've all been tackles. A couple guys that come off come to the mind for me: Zion Johnson, obviously Kenyon Green. Those are both guards, and then you can go Tyrell Winderbaum, who's a center. I don't think the Cowboys go center. I think they go Zion Johnson from Boston College. In my opinion, the best guard in the draft. I, I always kind of group away guards and centers because I feel like they kind of two different positions. Even though they always can say we can move people, we can all that fun stuff. I think the Cowboys miss out on maybe the top edge rushers after um, Carfophilus, who was a potential top 10 pick maybe four months ago, uh, falls to 23 to the Cardinals. I think the Cowboys like to strengthen that interior alignment. They could go linebacker into Kobe Dean. I don't think they do that. Mm-hmm. Their top two D tackles are off the board, in my opinion, Jordan Davis and Devontae Wyatt. I like Zion Johnson, my number one guard on my board. And I think the Cowboys like to strengthen their alignment, and they're going to go Zion Johnson at 24. All right. That leaves me for the Buffalo Bills. I just realized I get the Buffalo Bills. Yes. And before you take the pick, if you, I hope you make the pick so I don't uh, jump through my Zoom screen and uh, have to have to punch you. But I hopefully, are hopefully you, 
before I before I give yeah. you a are you team running back in the first round or not? I'm 50 50. I've, I've, <laughs> I've, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, Look, I'm I, not I, going, I, I'm not going running back. I don't hate the running back at 25. I don't love the running back. I think the running back in the first round is always an interesting pick. I think if you're a team that is mm-hmm. ready to win a Super Bowl, that's not a bad pick. If you're the Giants or the Panthers, when the McCaffrey and Saquon Barkley, those are bad picks, but the yeah. Bills are not those teams they're ready to win a super Bowl and they should win a super bowl so Brees hall would and i think that's probably the consensus at in the first round not a bad pick i see other needs but we'll, um, we'll see what you got judge i'm not going running back here if you uh i'm gonna go with, I, I called this guy on my on my podcast i called him my safety pick you know sort of that hey, you don't have a date to the dance. I don't have a date to the dance. We're going to go to the dance together. And I think if you get to pick number 25 and the board falls this way, guys like Jahad Dotson are off the board. Guys like Andrew Booth are off the board. Guys like Zion Johnson are off the board. I'm tempted by Brees Hall. I'm tempted by Kenyon Green. But I'm going with Kyler Gordon, the cornerback from the University of Washington here. Closing speed, coverage awareness, reactive athleticism. I just think he has all of the physical tools. His tape's not as clean as Trent McDuffie, but there's a lot of things on his tape that flash that I think a lot of teams are going to fall in love with. I wouldn't be shocked if he's off the board before the Buffalo Bills pick yeah. at number 25. This guy has a really interesting background. His physical archetype, like his speed and his size, is comparable to a Marcus Peters, who's a very good cornerback. But his agility numbers and his explosion numbers blow Marcus Peters out of the water. And people saw Kyler Gordon's 40 time. It's like a four five something. And they were like, oh, he's too slow. He's too slow. This guy's an athlete, right? Yeah. Like he grew up and in his youth, he did like Taekwondo, martial arts, ballet, dance. He's got all these crazy things in his background where the guy is just the most flexible athlete in this draft. You see guys like Von Miller and all these other guys later on in their careers getting into sort of these new age style workouts like yoga and, you know, martial arts and stuff to prolong their careers. This kid's been doing it since he was a teenager. He is an absolute freak of an athlete traits for days. I think the Buffalo bills see that. I think the Buffalo bills have a need at corner. I think the value meets the need here and they take Kyler Gordon at pick number 25. I love it. I love it. I love it. My my two biggest things at round one, wide receiver and corner. Um, I think Kyle Gordon, you can go career alarm, but with McDuffie off the board, Booth, obviously Stingley and Sauce, Kyle Gordon. I know I follow you on Twitter, George. I, I, I know you I know you love obviously I follow you personally and air right now. I know Kyle Gordon's been been one of your guys or man crushes lately. So I think Kyle Gordon would be and I always thought it was Kyle. I don't know. I was doing my big board and I just, I was going on, to, I did an, I was writing an article for built in Buffalo and I was trying to find like Twitter content for Kyle Gordon just to put in the article. And I kept having Kyle Gordon, right. And nothing ever came up. And I was like, what the hell am I doing here? Like, does this guy just not exist? Like, am I just, and then I go back to my big board. And I'm like, that's what is a Kyler. And I'm like, Holy cow. I've watched tape on this guy. I've done research on this guy and I didn't know his name was Kyler. So that was something that was interesting. Obviously, it means nothing to anybody, but I like to pick for the Bills at 25 with Kyle Gordon. The Tennessee Titans at 26. I think this is an easy pick. Their number one need, in my opinion, is linebacker. Uh, Devin Lloyd's off the board. N'Kobe Dean's my number two linebacker from Georgia. Always take a Georgia defensive player. I feel like that might always work out, uh, especially if we've seen how good their defense was that helped them win a national championship with uh, Stenson Bennett at quarterback. N'Kobe Dean. Titans running to the board to hand that card in or whatever they do now at this point, probably send a freaking text message, probably send a DM to the people that do it. 26 Tennessee Titans. They go into Kobe Dean, the best linebacker left on the board at 26 So the Titans kind of reassure that defense and get their number one need. All right. So I like that pick. Um, I think that's, I'm struggling here with the Buccaneers. I think the Buccaneers could do something pretty crazy, right? I think that they're a team that could, uh, come out of left field, but I'm looking at some of their free agent additions. They added Keanu Neal, they added Logan Ryan, they got Carlton Davis, Jamal Dean, Sean Murphy Bunting. I think they're set in the secondary. Obviously, they're losing guys like Jason Pierre Paul. They could look to add another edge rusher, but they do have Shaq Barrett and Joe Tryon. Um, pretty thin at 
along the defensive line as well. But they got Vita Vey. Looking at maybe some people who could play five tech. I'm also looking at guard as something. They got Shaq Mason, but they did lose two guards. I think the offensive line is important for protecting Tom Brady. They could easily go defense here, something along the defensive line or an edge rusher of some kind. But I'm going to stick with the safety pick here. I'm going to go Kenyon Green from Texas A&M. I think he fits right in there at left guard. You got Shaq mm-hmm. Mason at right guard. You got Ryan Jensen in the middle and then Donovan, Mitch, uh, Donovan Smith and Tristan Wirfs on the outside. That's a pretty solid offensive line in front of uh, Mr. Brady there. So I'm going to go with Kenyon Green here from Texas A&M. Just a really good college offensive lineman, played multiple positions. Two-time consensus All-American. He plug and play left guard. I like it. You took my pick for the Green Bay Packers at 28. I think Kenyon Green's probably the best guard available. Well, the first time I've done that, I apologize. No, no worries, no worries. This is the fun of it. We don't, we don't. This is not pre, uh, pre-written down. This is a legit, um, content that comes at you guys. Um, 28 with the Packers. I'm going tight end. Ooh. I'm going Trey McBride. I'm going very, very interesting. I could be totally, totally wrong on this. I didn't see any of the offensive linemen that I liked that they could take at 28. I don't think they, unless they took Kenny and Green or Zion Johnson, but they're both on the board to the Cowboys and the Buccaneers. Um, they already want receiver. They're not going to double up on receiver. So why not go another weapon that's not a receiver? Trey McBride, he's my number one tight end. I know a lot of people like Jelani Woods. I know you like Jelani Woods. I know a lot of people like um, Isaiah Likely from Coastal Carolina. I think there's maybe not a first-round grade on a lot of tight ends, but Ian Rappaport said a lot of people we have like to go in the third round, could go in the first round. This could be one of those picks because I think Trey McBride, in my opinion, slides in maybe middle of the second, early third. That's just my opinion. So maybe he's one of their picks. And they go another weapon. So the Packers walk away of Jahan Dotson and Trey McBride, which is not a bad first night haul. So mm-hmm. Trey McBride, Colorado State, number one, first tight end off the board. Uh, the Green Bay Packers are taking them. All right. I like that pick. Um, you know, a guy like uh, – a guy like – why am I blanking on the name of their coach? Matt LaFleur. You know, he, a couple of years ago, he took A.J. Dillon and he took Joseph DeGuara early, and people were like, what are they doing? But it's because he's a guy who really likes those 12 personnel packages. Yes. you got Robert Tunyon coming off of an injury. Jay Sternberger, obviously, sort of a bust there. So I think a guy like Trey McBride helps their run game, which is something that Matt LaFleur likes. And he also is a really nice target for Aaron Rodgers. So Aaron Rodgers now adds Jahan Dotson, right? With the first pick is what you took. Yes, yes. And Jahan right? if I were Aaron Rodgers, I might be ecstatic. And it might make me just a little bit forget that Devontae Adams still exists. <laughs> and is a Las Vegas Raider. Yes. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in tune with the surprise pick here at pick number 29. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs try to replicate what they lost in Tyree Kill. I'm not saying this guy is the next Tyree Kill, but I think they try to replicate it a little bit. I'm taking Calvin Austin from the University of Memphis off the board here to the Kansas City Chiefs. You look at his advanced statistics, Calvin Austin played a ton on the outside for the uh, for the Memphis Tigers, and he had success on the outside. I understand it was success against lower-level competition, non-Power 5 competition, but a guy like Calvin Austin can win on the outside as well as in the slot. Uh, and I think he can replicate at least a little bit of what Tyree Kill does, and he keeps that element of speed within the offense. I don't think Miko Hardman can just slide right into that Tyree Kill role. I think he will need a little bit of help in replicating what Tyree Kill does. So I'm taking Calvin Austin Jr. off the board. I like it. I like it. I think receiver is their pick. Uh, in my opinion, Traylon Burks is the best player available in the receiver position, but I don't think he fits what they want to do. So I think that's mm-hmm. exactly the right um, analysis on that. 30, the Chiefs are on the board again. They're they're getting ready. They're going to go edge rusher, and they're going David Ajobu from Ooh. Michigan. They're going to bet on him coming back because they're a type of team that doesn't need an impact player right away, and I think they need another pass rusher down the road. They could go corner, maybe um, Kareem Alam, Roger McCreary. I do love Roger McCreary a lot. Um, there's, the edge rushers aren't great. I have a second-round grade on David Ajobu at this point. Walker's off the board. Jermaine Johnson off the board. Carl off of his Thibodeau Hutchinson all off the board. David Ajobu is their pick. They go edge rusher. The two biggest needs, in my opinion, are wide receiver and edge. You nailed it with Calvin Austin. Excuse me, with the wide receiver. And then I go edge rusher with David Ajobu from Michigan. 
All right. So that leaves me up with the Cincinnati Bengals now. I'm looking. Your oh, final okay. pick. Your final I, didn't pick tonight. I didn't realize I signed Hayden Hurst. That's a good signing for them. Uh, Jonah Williams, Jackson Carmen, Ted Karras, not the camp. They're, they're off the line, it seems set. Their defensive line took a little bit of a beating. Cornerback is a big need. I can see them. I'm going to go now take a look quickly at who they visited with. Mm-hmm. This is your final pick. So you want to, this is how people are going to remember you. <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to see a Tariq Woolen has a, a, in any way, shape, or form been tied to them. Mm-hmm. And it looks like he has not. Something that could be a possible Tyler Linderbaum if they wanted to go off with the lineman. He could be an option. They obviously wanted to go center or interior line. I think that they really care about their quarterback. And I think that despite the fact that they added, um, despite the fact that they added Hayden Hurst, despite the fact that they added or that they drafted early a guy like Drew Sample a couple of years ago. Yeah. I'm going to take Delaney Woods here. And I think that he comes in and he fills into that CJ Azuma role. I think they want that big old target for uh, Joe Burrow. Uh, and I think Jelani Woods is a nice fit here for the Cincinnati Bengals offense and allows them to, to keep on rolling. I mean, you got guys like T Higgins, Jelani Woods, Tyler Boyd working in the middle of the field. You got guys like Jamar Chase on the outside. Uh, I just keep adding weapons for Joe Burrows. I feel like one thing I wouldn't have said that would happen tonight is that we would have two tight ends <laughs> going in, in the first round. But I guess, I guess we both agree on that. This 32nd pick for the Detroit Lions, and I want to make this disclaimer like Judge said earlier in the draft with the Texans, we're not doing trades. I think this is a really easy trade out if I'm the Lions. Such an easy trade out. A team that wants a quarterback potentially in Kenny Pickett, that want to have that extra fifth year, all that fun stuff, or just another team that wants to trade in. Why would the Lions sit here and not get more capital? Mm-hmm. I think that seems like a great option. I don't know what you what, what are your th- quickly thoughts on the Lions probably moving out of this pick? That's what I think they should do and potentially would do. I think it's one of two things. I think if they take Trayvon Walker or another position player, non-quarterback at pick number two, if by some chance like they were high on like Malik Willis, like Malik Willis was their guy, but they just didn't feel comfortable pulling the trigger at two. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe they're working the boards trying to trade up to get him, trying to jump whoever takes him. Obviously, they're not going to jump. Um, where did you have him going? I apologize. You had him going six, six. I would say they're not going to jump to six. No. Let's say Carolina took Kenny Pickett or pass on a quarterback. Yeah, yeah. And you get to Pittsburgh and Pittsburgh passes on a quarterback. And it would not shock me, right? If one or zero quarterbacks go in the first round, it wouldn't yeah. like all of this quarterback talk could just all be smoke, right? Like this could legitimately, like this could be the year that NFL GMs and NFL owners finally realize how stupid it is to draft a quarterback that you don't truly believe in. Exactly. Just you need a quarterback. This might be the year that that clicks. And I wouldn't, it would not shock me. And I know that's, you can, you can, you can preface any statement and say, it wouldn't shock me and then say something outlandish. It wouldn't shock me. Yeah. If they didn't take a single, not a single quarterback was taken in the first round, but if one fell all the way to the, to pick number 32, you get that fifth year option. They really like Desmond Ritter they really like Kenny Pickett or if Malik Willis on the board, they still, they really like Malik Willis or Sam Howell. They really liked one of those guys. I, I could see them pulling the trigger at 32, but a guy like Dax Hill might be really hard for them to pass on here. A Michigan guy. Uh, and then there's a couple other guys on the board as well. You just took my pick. Daxton Hill. <laughs> Daxton Hill. Well, that, Cause I was going to maybe take him for the Bengals and realized he was still on the board when I took Jelani Woods. And I was like, Oh shit, he better go in the first round. Cause I think he's going. So I'm glad yeah. Well, they could go Tyra Linderbaum, and I think that's probably a biggest shocker from tonight, Judge, yeah, that he falls out of our first round, in our it, opinion. It's the size, man. I mean, at the end of the day, it's straight up the size. Like, he's he's a center only. I don't that's, – That's the problem. Yeah. He, why? We, and I don't think you should move – if a guy is so good at center, and he's the consensus number one center, don't take him in the first round and then move him. Yeah. Like, that doesn't, like, make any sense. And the Lions have Frank Ragno, and I think um, he's they yeah. like him at center. They went Trayvon Walker. They could go quarterback. Kenny Pickett, Sam Howe, Desmond Ritter. I hate all three of them, so that's fun. Um, but Daxton Hill, 32, I think too good to pass up. 
um, as a safety position. And we didn't have a lot of safeties going. We had uh, Kyle Hamilton. They could also go, who's a safety from Baylor? Luis, not Luis. Um, Jalen Petrie. Petrie. Yes, thank you. Um, Luis Chin is the guy from Georgia. That's what I was thinking of. Daxon Hill, easy pick for the Lions at 32. I do think they trade out. But to end the draft, I got the Detroit Lions, who – Almost basically, almost start the draft at number two, and then end the first round with thirty-two Detroit Lions. I like it. Okay, guys, guys, make sure you guys. Hopefully, you guys stay tuned for this whole episode. We're a little longer, but we have to do our mock draft. We have to get our content out there. You guys will see this uh, Monday, Monday morning, and then obviously the draft is Thursday, April twenty-eighth. So we'll, we'll see this via social media on Twitter and Instagram with us. Um, and also, guys, comment down below who you guys have your favorite team drafting in the first round or whenever you want and judge i appreciate you coming on and one last time where mm-hmm. can everyone that follows and listens to the talking sports podcast check you out yeah monday and thursday nights over on the cover one youtube channel we host a buffalo bill centric live stream called the air raid hour uh, and you can also find me on my social media of choice twitter either at judge mathis m-a-t-h-e-s or at the bills guys uh, that is our show handle Guys, make sure you guys check them out. A lot of that information will be down low in the description, as well as make sure you guys follow the Talking Sports Podcast on Twitter, Instagram at Talking Sports PD, and also on Apple Podcast. Once again, guys, appreciate you guys tuning in. This was the Talking Sports Podcast on YouTube and Apple Podcasts, hosted by Peter DiBiase and John Rock with Trump Boy with guest George Mathis. Until next time, guys, enjoy the NFL draft and have a good rest of your week. Thank you.